you've been and where you're going. This is Ari's Travel Show, yeah. We're gonna talk about travel today. It's you be tripping, yeah. Hello, everybody. Welcome to You Be Tripping. It's a travel podcast. It's the only travel podcast endorsed by the FDA. Um, Rob Lowe is my guest today. Fucking thanks for coming in, buddy. Hey, this is. I'm, are you kidding me? I love travel. You have maps here. Yeah, I could. Stu- I could study. M- I could study a map and a or a globe all day long. Yeah, it's, it's both inspiring and depressing. Inspiring because you go, "Hey, I've been there. Oh, I've yeah. been there," and then go, "God, I, am I ever going to get to go there? I don't know." You know what strikes me on these maps? How big this is, Kazakhstan. It's huge. I just thought it'd be like you know, like the size of like Georgia or something. Well, and then there's the whole thing about that. The, the 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 this map isn't truly a representation. The West Wing oh, yeah. did a an episode, a B story about the map makers coming in and showing what the world really looks like. Really? And it's shocking. Like the way the United States looks versus other things. And it's a whole it's a it, there's a there's a, a name for that type of map, I forget. But oh, it's yeah. the theory is it's that is the way the world should look. And like you know, people have you know, well, when you flatten it, what does it change? A different like the, yeah, that that's closer ex- to the equator. Yeah, or yeah that's ex- it's all that stuff. That's right. Also, I noticed I try to switch it up with this one where the USA is always fucking right here. Uh so, yeah. But that's not that's not a real thing. Well, there's also a there's part no of the end. globe you can look at from space where it looks like the, the Earth is entirely made of water. Oh really? Yeah, like all, pretty region. almost. Yeah. Interesting. Iceland, Greenland. I'm I'm obsessed with the fact that turns out. Greenland has no green and only yeah. ice, <laughs> and Iceland is mostly green. Yeah, they said that was to to throw off the invaders. I don't believe that. I don't. Believe I don't think it they either. were that. I think they had like like focus groups to figure that shit out. One would have gone and be like, "Hey, they're lying. There's actually it, a bunch of resources. We should go take them." Well, how about this? What, what, what you pass Iceland on the way to Greenland? So, yeah, nobody's gonna turn back and be like, no. "Oh, guys, it's that one." Yeah, no, that I, that does, that never that doesn't <laughs> hold water for me. Yeah. You ever look back at the shit they taught you in school and be like, wait, now that I'm an adult, you were lying. George Washington was incapable of lying. Our first leader. Yeah, he never <laughs> told a lie. Physically couldn't do it. A 12-year-old. <laughs> yeah, and he and why did anyone care that he chopped down the apple tree? Yeah. Oh, is that where the lie came from? And somebody said, George, who chopped down this apple tree? And he said, I did. I did. Well, like, yeah, we saw you. Obviously, you're caught. Yeah, hello. But I never got... My teachers must have been so bad yeah. that all I remember is he never told a lie and he chopped down an apple tree, but not the fact that they're, those stories go together. Yeah, he admitted to what he did, something bad. I just thought that my teachers thought it was fascinating that he chopped a fucking apple tree down once. Who cares? You ever see his teeth, what they thought of his teeth? They were wooden. <laughs> he lost it all and just really bad eating habits and disease. But, but, but didn't... Everybody have wooden teeth. I then? think so, but we just can't do it. So would... good. What are we looking up here? George Washington's teeth. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God! No way. <laughs> like that's what it would have been. Ugh. George Washington's teeth, not from wood, but slaves. From slaves? What? He had slaves' teeth? Oh boy! Yeah, that's his history on a berry. <laughs> that's that's, that's not definitely a, a new. Ver- <laughs> they did not teach me that. No. Oh my God. <laughs> the horrific America. Good Lord. Uh, let's go somewhere besides America. <laughs> Where do you want to tell me about? They said around here. Um, well, yeah. I mean, so I took the trip of my life was um, I, uh, two, about, about two, a little under two years ago. I did Israel, yeah. um, Jordan, and Egypt. What brought this on? Why did you decide to go? I have a very good friend who named Peter Guber, mm-hmm. and Peter owns the um, Golden State Warriors, among other things. Oh, very nice. successful producer, businessman, and loves travel, and puts together a guy's trip about every about every two years, every year, and they're always extraordinary. Like no expenses spared. Everything. I mean, like we had the Giza Pyramid complex to ourselves. What? What yeah, or like he figures out a way that you can like after hours, before hours, something like that. It was, it was, it was uh, sunset Giza pyramid complex, and th- that's just one of the things we we had, we had we biked into Wadi Room in Jordan, 
And there's a... What is Wadi Room? Wa look up Wadi Room. Yeah. So Wadi Room is where they shot The Martian, where they shot Lawrence of Arabia. It's definitely the most beautiful place I saw. Um, so, yeah. Damn. So, and that's not even a great photo. It, it, it's, it's the most beautiful, iconic sort of desert, monolithic mountain structures, no one for miles. Um, and uh, there we go. That's that's more what it looks like. Literally, the Martian. God damn. Yeah, it really does. It looks like Mars. It looks like Mars. Um, and we biked into it. Could you bike on the like the desert floor? Mm hmm. And they had wow. special bikes. Oh wow. That was damn. That seems so fucking cool. It was really, really. How great. long did it take you to get in there? And then we had, we, you know, we went we went on camel safari. Um, it took us a day to bike in. I mean, it was it was really <laughs> hardcore. I mean, it was it was hard. And then um, oh, that's I got so to badass. spend my birthday on the Nile. I had never been to the Nile. It was everything I hoped. Um, the Nile. It yeah. was like Africa to me. Well, it is in Africa technically, I guess, northern Africa. But the vibe, Explain. the vibe of the Nile, the yeah. energy of it, you just feel something. I, and Egypt was... Egypt is magic. M magic. It's it's like I didn't get it till I went there. Right? It's, it's like magic just living there. I suspected it would be magic. And it was above and beyond the Valley of the Kings... Yeah, uh, but the fact the fact that they carved this shit into a mountain. You ever step back for a second and be like, what? even now it's crazy. It's the the the, the entire trip there, um, and then and then uh, Petra, of course, uh -huh. is really stunning because they don't even know when that was. They still cannot tell you. Yeah. Um, describe it, describe coming down that 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 um, little tube, the yeah, little yeah, pathway. Yeah. And it, it opens up into this. Yeah. It's it doesn't which, do the which scale. by the way, look at how perfectly pristine it is. It doesn't look old because it's protected by wind and erosion because of where they built it. That's why it's so uh, crystal. I mean, look at what it should be all look, you see people at the looking. very, very bottom there. That's like that's how massive it is. Petra is in yeah, what, right. It and should what, be completely faded down. Yeah, it should be erode like the Sphinx or the pyramids. It's not, but what you don't see when you look at that famous photo yeah. is just to the right of it uh -huh. are all of these burial chambers, right? Like yeah. there's the, those weird, and they are eroded and they do look ancient. The holes? The holes, yeah. right? Those crazy holes. And like, so you have that, looks like caveman crazy, old, ancient. And then you have that, which looks like, that looks like it could be a brownstone in New York City. <laughs> yeah, it really does. It does. If it was one, smaller, if that's one story, said, two You'd look stories. at that and go, yeah, I bet that looks like they built that about, yeah, that must have, I bet you Abraham Lincoln spoke there. And then when they <laughs> yeah. Christened it. Yeah. Dude, we, we were going down on some tour, me and my brother, and the guy kept telling us about the irrigation techniques and stuff like that. I kind of wandered off. And then I came back like an hour later. I was like, Michael. Drop this loser. Let's go fucking explore. No, dude, what is with the guides? Okay, it's so funny you say that. You're good. So our guide in Israel, God yeah. bless him. Yeah. <laughs> All he wanted to talk about was the irrigation. I'm not kidding, but the irrigation. <laughs> and I realized everything he was telling me was 1947 to today. No so here we phone. are in one of the oldest areas of the world, where civilization has been talked about since the beginning of time, and he's hitting me with, you know, this this piping system was put in in the 1950s. I'm like, no, 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 no. Dude, who Tell gives me. a fuck? No, Jesus walked here. It's insane. Yeah. He's like, you know, we have more solar panels in this country. I, I, I get it. I get it. Fucking God, I don't know what the deal bad, is with those guides. Bad guides yeah. are the bane of my... I went to, to Gettysburg once. Mm-hmm. I love Gettysburg. I love doing historical stuff, yeah. um, military historical stuff. And I knew more about Gettysburg than he did. Or if I did, maybe I didn't, but I was more interested in the the the, the nitty gritty. Yeah. And it, it's it can be super rough, but obviously a great guide is also makes all the difference if you can get them. If you, I mean, if you get a good one, it gives you access and stuff. Like when we went there, we went from a lot. To there, and they got us the stamp really fast and got us over the border. Mm -hmm. It's hard for like if you have a an Israeli great. step, yeah, yeah. 
And then that part's nice, but then it's like, I'll see you guys at 5 p.m. We actually went to Northern Israel um, and we're, we're like, on, the, on the border of, we're, well, I've been to Lebanon as well. Um, Jesus, dude, you get after it. Le, the, 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 the Becca Valley in Lebanon. Le, by the way, Lebanon's one of those beautiful countries I've ever seen in my life. Uh, Le, Lebanon is a more beautiful version of Israel. Um, Interesting. Where they talk about the cedars of Lebanon, you know, mm -hmm. it's on the flag. And they do have these amazing pines. It just, it, it, it looks like Southern there. Greece and they're right next to each other. But you think for whatever reason, you don't think it's going to be as pretty as it is. And it's, it's yeah. just. They used to say that Damascus, Beirut was like, was the. The garden capital. Yeah. And the intelligentsia of the Middle East. And they're still there. Really? And 100%. The uh. old families are still there, and you'll be in the middle of talking, and the power will go out for three hours every yeah. day. Nobody cares. There, you know, the, the, that, there's that insane explosion. You've seen the footage of that thing blowing up in the harbor. In, um, the fireworks factor or someplace? Just, it's, what, it, was it? It, was a, it, it was some Recently, sort of right? ammonium nitrate thing. The, yeah. Like that footage, and like they just take it in stride. <laughs> How do you feel about that when you're going to like to go from like I mean I you know they they wait on you hand and foot in Hollywood. Yes, and then you go to a place like that where it's just like nah, it ain't that experience anymore. Well, I I seek it out because of the very thing you're talking about. So like when I go to Africa, yeah, I and I, it's kind of a fight I have with my wife and one of my children. I have one one son who's a huge outdoorsman, and he's with me. But my actor son, go figure, yeah. <laughs> wants to be coddled along with his mommy. Yeah, and they want the Abercrombie and Kent. I want like fly camps. I want to go and pitch a tent. Yeah, in Africa, in areas where no one has ever pitched a tent before. Like that's what I want Damn. when I go there. And if it rains on us and and there's puddles and we have to sleep in the water, I don't care. That's that's what, do what they I say want. about it. They say, think you're an idiot. They like it for they like it for two days tops. They think you're like crazy. And they would not do it if it weren't for me. Wow, it's nice though. It's a pest. Yeah. I mean, in the adventures you get, like one time I was flooded out in a flash flood. Yeah. Where? Uh, and uh, both both one was in Tanzania and one was Kenya. It was a flash flood. Literally, the river rose overnight and almost swept us away. So what what'd you, what'd you do? Just. The tents were destroyed, and we had to go sleep in the cars, in the in the Range Rover, what? The, the, the whatever mountain Rover, whatever they are. <laughs> That's yeah. fucking wild. And and I also like to do crazy shit that I shouldn't do. Like um, last time we were there, we were in in uh, the um, hang on in the Rift Valley. Uh huh. Now I've heard of that. I remember the Rift Valley is where the first humanoids were found. Okay. And I'm a runner, and I was like, could I? And I run every day. Like, hey, I'm here in New York. Can't wait to go to Central Park. I'm like, could I do my run today out there? And they're like, we'd have to have guns. And I mean, people don't do that. There's Because of the animals? The animals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I got to do it. Really? And one of my favorite photos is my son took a picture of me running in the Rift Valley where the first human probably, not probably, the first humans ran right yeah. there. And you're running and you're looking out and you're going, oh, my God, I'm going to run over to those giraffes. You sort no of, fucking way, like you Jurassic sort of run, Park. You sort of run over in the area of the drafts. Of course, they're long gone. And then you're running for a while, and then you see these low-level bushes. You're like, mm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to avoid those <sighs> bushes. I don't know what's what's in there. And it's a thing, like, to run in yeah. Africa wondering if there is a lion behind a bush. <laughs> so people are a, trailing you with, like... a visceral, <laughs> like, other-level... Yeah, thing. dude, if I'm hiking anywhere here and I hear, like, rustling, if, it's usually a squirrel, but I'm yeah. so fucking on edge because it might be a moose or a bear. The, what I told myself, it's clearly not true, is that it's so wide open. It's not like walking in Santa Barbara Mountains, where literally it's probably more dangerous because a fucking mountain lion could be above you and you'd never even know it. Yeah. You feel like, oh, I'd see a herd of stampeding elephants if they came towards me. Yeah, but, uh, it's, but the hunting animals, they smell you from, like, two miles out. It's, I one? wouldn't do, I tell you what, I wouldn't do it again. I would not run. I'm going to go for the torch here. Um, you would not do it again. I would There's not, something I would, to walk though where no one's walked. Like if you get off a trail for a while and risk poison ivy 
And you touch a tree, I, touch a tree that like no one's touched this one. That's what I want. I want stuff that no one's done before. Damn, bro. Hey, everybody. I'm breaking in real quick just to let you know that I got fucking Rob goddamn low on the podcast. <laughs> what? I'm fucking mainstream. That's right. You can't hold me back anymore. Rob Lowe first. Uh, who's who else is big? Uh, 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 I don't know. Who's a big actor? Um, Brad Pitt. You're what? Actually, let's fucking play hardball. You're not welcome. I already got a great looking man. I don't need you, Brad Pitt. Move along. Go find another fucking half rate travel podcast to be part of. <laughs> Guys, everybody, Rob Lowe's got a new show right now on Netflix. Uh, season two of Unstable is out right now. He does with his son who went to a school. I don't think it was that son that I hate. Uh, Rob Lowe and his son, John Owen, lead him. Motley Tech World Ensemble. Rob Lowe and John Owen Lowe star in the father-son workplace comedy, Unstable. Meet legend Ellis Dragon. I don't I don't think anyone under 30 understands how big Rob fucking Lowe is. He's part of the Brat Pack. He did Selma, St. Elmo's Fire, and it was a fucking massive. All these guys that were in these coming-of-age story uh, movies in the 80s, they called them the Brat Pack. It was meant as an insult, but then it became like a compliment. Uh, we just took it. Kind of like when they call comics clown. And it was like, oh, I know you call other people clown. We are clowns, so it doesn't hurt us. Emilio Estevez, Anthony Michael Hall, Rob Lowe, Demi Moore, um, Judd Nelson, Molly Ringwald was like the biggest thing on the fucking planet. Ali Sheedy, goddamn. I dated a girl that looked like Ali Sheedy for a while. And Andrew McCarthy, who is now a travel writer, who I do want on the show. But guys, everybody, check out Unstable. Uh, let's get back to the episode, but also, please hit subscribe. I'm trying to get up to 100,000 subscribers. We're close. We're 60% of the way there. Well, hopefully this will help. Click subscribe right now on YouTube or on Spotify. And if you're watching on YouTube uh, or if you're listening on Spotify, go check out the YouTube because some of Rob Lowe's pictures from his trip are going to be put up there in context in the episode. And I um, hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm enjoying it. I didn't know what to expect from this guy. I was like, oh, he's just some like movie star. Is, is he even like travel? Is he going to tell me about a resort? And man, he got here and he's like, resort? <laughs> I'm getting my hands dirty. Bro, it's fucking, he, this guy lives. This guy lives. Also, the Jew vinyl is available right now at AriShafir.com. Um, 600 are already spoken for. Another 400 are still made. They're shipping out in August. Um, I can't wait for you guys to get your hands on them. If you don't didn't get one of the signed ones, the limited signed ones, you can just get one and bring it to a show. When I start touring again, December, in January, February, March, and I'll sign it for you there. Bring a black Sharpie. Um... You can also get Shroomfest shirts at MySpiteArishaPair.com, but that's it, you guys. I got nothing major to promote. How about love one another? How about, you know, this uh, political season, don't get too involved. <laughs> How about that as my thing I promote? Everybody, chill the fuck out. Uh, let's get back to the episode. Subscribe, and I'll see you on the side. Leave a comment if you liked it, and uh, again, keep telling me which other uh, travelers you'd like to get on the show so I can get them in. Wonton Don is coming from your from your uh, suggestions. Um, and I don't know who else. And if you know somebody and you want to reach out to them on Twitter, Instagram, whatever, let them know that they should reach out, especially the high-level guys like Rob Lowe. I can't, guys. I'm a fucking dork. I can't reach out to people like that. That was lucky. I was lucky he liked this fucking format of the show and he's a traveler himself. So reach out to them and pressure them to do You Be Tripping. Now let's get back to the episode of this fucking epic trip to Egypt, Jordan, and Israel. Fucking God, if I had as much money as him... I would do it like him. Kudos, man. Let's get back to the episode. Tell me about Egypt a little more. Um, so, so all of you guys went there. It was a really, really good group, and we did we did all, every greatest hit of Egypt uh -huh. in like two and a half days because we had planes to buses to trains, and it was oh, like a wow. motorcade, and everything was like a Swiss watch. We got to spend all of the time in the places you would want to see, but. If, if you weren't going with somebody like Peter, who's so generous, just to go to Valley of the Kings and then to get to Cairo, it would take you a day and a half, whatever it yeah. is. The, I'm not really familiar with the logistics, but it would have, it would have, there's no, it's, we did a 10 day I, vacation in three days. Yeah, I had probably two, two or three days there and, and didn't touch half of what you touched. Mm -mm. It was we went from the top of the Nile to tough. the bottom of the Nile. Wow. So, to Alexandria? Uh, yep, Luxor. Luxor. Um, I mean, you name it, we saw it. But the val I, I will say, taking a selfie with King Tut 
was pretty sick. Dude, you got to send me these pictures. I want to put them in the video. Oh, I will. Okay. It, it's like, you're like, Self- I mean, it's a selfie with King Tut. You it's kind of oh. gross in a way, yeah, I feel fuck like. It. Fuck that. Fuck that. Was, he didn't have that technology. He would have loved it. He would have loved Tut would have loved it. He that's been, why they entombed. They want to be live on forever. They want to live on forever. That's right. This is why they did it. Like, yeah. That someone someday would be taking a selfie of him. <laughs> that's so fucking cool. It, it's And it's just, and the thing that blows your mind, and it makes perfect sense, it's like, duh, but it never occurs to you, is... There's if they dug anywhere, yeah, they're gonna they don't they purposely don't dig because they know they're gonna find stuff, and then when they find stuff, nobody has the money to properly excavate stuff. Whoa. There's there's no money to exca- excavate none. Yeah, so they don't want to find stuff because they know they're gonna find something incredible, and it's everywhere, like everywhere. Yeah, I saw a little bit of like excavation near there, near like in that whole big park of the of the of the well, whatever pyramids. But there was like a little and off to the side, and so, like you don't know how long it goes. So down. when I was in Valley of the Kings, they said they were about they had just discovered a new tomb, and but they did, and they've known about it forever, but they never had the money. They know where shit is. That's it's broke insane. Spot there. And they just don't have the money, so they got the, and and that they just announced it a couple of. I think a couple of months ago, whatever the latest announcement out of Valley of the Kings. And then um, I was, where, where was the, what was the other announcement about? Um, there was some other thing that they were, I'll, I'll think of it, but the point being, um, it's just for lack of funds more than anything yeah. else. Oh, I know it was. The, um, the great Egyptolo- Egyptologist, the one that you see, on TV, the one main guy, the one main guy whose yeah. name is escaping me. Yeah, um, he hadn't announced, but he had just discovered um, the workers' complex. He was very, very adamant that they weren't the pyramids were not built by slaves. What? And who? That's me. That's the Jews. They're taking that away from us? Yeah, they're taking it away. <laughs> what the Revisionist fuck? History. We did one good thing with our hands. One good fucking thing. <laughs> yeah, that's him. Yeah? And Zahi Hawass? Yep. And Imagine wanted to be very clear and, and that they weren't, and that they were built by people, not ancient aliens or anything else, because he also found records of what they did on what days. Like, these stones were moved on this oh, day. Oh, no way, this, really? Yeah. Oh, interesting. Because they love that explanation. Oh, I'm a big ancient alien guy, so I. So I, what? You don't like it? <laughs> well, I, no, I was going to the Sphinx, going looking for the water erosion because that's uh-huh. the that's the big thing. As you can see around the Sphinx, what looks to any reasonable person like water erosion, and the last time there would have been water, yeah, predates anything that anybody is talking about in terms of when these things were built. Because it's not on the pyramids, right? That's right. So it's in between. That's you know right. anything about Baha'i? I probably the do. They say, oh, they yeah, t- sure. They take the um, at any similarities between all the religions, they're like, that's probably the word of God. And then everything else got like obfuscated over the years. That makes sense. But like, don't kill is in every religion. So, like, that's probably true. Right. And there's a flood story in pretty much every in every. Religion. Oh, yeah. There's a flood, there's a flood story in, in, in everything. So they're like, there was a flood somewhere. You For know? sure. Yeah. Yeah. It's that the the Sphinx is a different time period, right? It's a completely Way different, different. Like, architecture. And well, like, when you look at the, fa- the head yeah. and you go, that clearly. That was there when the first Egyptians showed up. What? And they knocked what we think was probably a lion's head off of it and made it into a sphinx head. I mean, it yeah, doesn't yeah, match yeah. at all. It's, 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 the proportions are all fucked up. And so the question is, who, who built the sphinx and when? And even this guy who is Zari Hawass, who is the, even he did not, nobody knows. Yeah. Literally not. No so you're saying they built another, I, they, they changed that head afterwards. Yeah. Look at it. Of course. Look yeah. at it. Look at it. Look at, it, look at this, the scope of it. Yeah. It is way off. Yeah. And look at, look at that. God damn. Look at the feet versus the head. And, and yeah, trust me. Right. So you've been telling me the people that built the perfectly geometric pyramids were going to fuck up something like that. No way. No. Did you meet people when you were there in Egypt? Uh, did I meet? Yeah. Yeah, what'd you think of them? They were, they were, it was so interesting that they were like, please tell people that Egypt is safe. I heard that multiple, multiple times. Interesting. That people really wanted people to, to come back to Egypt. 
because they had some terrorism there. When I went, it was like the the um, tourism had bottomed out, and mm -hmm. they were like desperate for like, come take a, a trip in the Nile, come do at like everything because no one was going. Well, and but you know, it, that we but, today couldn't do our trip to to um, Israel. That we stayed at some fancy Amon Giri up in northern Israel that's yeah. been closed since uh, since the war broke out. Oh, and damn. and the day we arrived in Israel, and this is so typical of the region, we get off the plane, we're going right to dinner, we're starving. Yeah. And we get on the plane and they go, um, change of plans, we're going back to the hotel tonight. Uh, we, we, we have dinner in the hotel. Great. And we're like, what, what happened to the rest? And go, well, there was an incident there last night and, um, and uh, we just think for security reasons we shouldn't go. And you turn and the two people were gunned down. Whoa. And it's just, it's just a fact of life. It's just the way they roll. And it's not like here when you're like, oh, there was a shooting. You're like, oh, well, there was a fight. It's just, it's a different kind of violence. It, it is. Know? It's 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 weirdly accepted and yet taken way more seriously all at the same time, if that yeah. makes any sense. Uh -huh. And I'll tell you the other thing is the people, and this is the, the cliche, but it's true. Same, same in Lebanon. Um, and obviously there's no love lost between Israel and Lebanon. But the the people are almost exactly, in terms of how they present and what it's like to spend time with them, exactly the same. <laughs> is it crazy? The Isn't food is almost identical. The food's identical. They look <laughs> identical. Yeah. They act identical. They uh, like they want to live life. They want to have fun. Yeah. They don't give one fuck. They're ready to like today is the last day. Yeah. Like. It, there's no pretense. Everybody's yeah. it's it's amazing. Israeli chicks will party. Dude, They're Israeli like, chicks, Israeli chicks are the most forward <laughs> on planet Earth. <laughs> and I get it because yeah. they don't have a tomorrow. Well, yeah, we got no time. Let's go. No, gotta, they don't I have a tomorrow. To and just think about it in terms of like do you want a date? Do you want to this? Do you want to I want to have kids? You gotta start cracking. So they will come right up to you and go, What are you doing tonight? Whoa. Oh, damn. Oh, it's amazing. <laughs> damn. I told my sons who are single. Yeah. I'm get like, out there. <laughs> I'm like, there are two places I would go if I were a single American and I had the wherewithal. Number one with a bullet would be Israel. What, there's not a question. The most beautiful women and yeah. the most down to clown. Yeah. Maybe it, Australia is right there. Australian chicks are wild. I And, and the other one is um, the Lexington Queen nightclub in Rapongi in Tokyo. What is that? Because it's a it's a model's paradise, and they've all been there forever. Yeah, and they're just desperate to see Americans. Oh wow! And I'm like, you you'll find like like 22 year old Cameron Diaz. Yeah, at the Rapongi. <laughs> yeah, just like a nobody. So happy to see like a corn fed boy <laughs> with not a pot to piss in. Like you, you you can live like a king. Wow, it's still there, by the way. Did people when you were out in um when you were out in the Middle East here, did people know who you were? Or was it kinda yeah, tell me about it. Well, there's something disconcerting about walking into Wadi room and the guide going, You just missed Oprah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? You're like, you want to be like, I've met her, like, whatever. You're like, she, I, she's my neighbor in Montecito. Yeah. Like, and then I was, I, it's running, running into people in obscure places is is very disconcerting. It, it jars your, yeah, your reality. But yeah, and but also as an actor, you know, it's great to it, it makes you feel good when you're recognized in obscure places, like in in the middle of the yeah. I mean, it's cool that, Egyptian your, that your reach went that far. Yeah, right? Yeah. But also, I bet you miss... I heard some interview with... Could have been the guy from The Graduate. I'm sorry, I got a block right now. Oh, um, 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 Dustin Hoffman. Yeah. And he goes, I try to observe people so I can mimic them when I'm acting. And then you, you can't do it when you're being observed yourself. They're, they're, they're acting around you. So you can't get a real... He goes, the only time I get a real look at people is when I'm shitting and I'm seeing through the crack in the door if people are talking at the That's amazing. The That's amazing. Blacked out windows in a car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can like stare I, at I love that. I love to go and and like, you know, like smoke a cigar and just and, and watch people. Uh huh. Like, and you can do it if you're in a if you're in a car with a window, the tinting on the window, or you know, to you're not observed. If you keep moving, you can do it. If That's moving, it. Yeah. If you keep moving, you can go through anywhere. Yeah. But you got to keep moving. 
And that's what gets hard when you're in a, a museum or you're at a monument or you're at a place like the Giza complex where you really want to spend the time and you want to take it in. And I'll show you some photos I, I took. Yeah. That are, Sean, you can pull those photos up. Do you have any? On my phone of yeah. Egypt. Um, um, they're spectacular. Yeah. Dude, I was in Guatemala and, and this guy I was with from hostels. We we're talking to Caroline about hostels and how fun they are. Oh, gosh. People, I've never whatever. done a hostel thing. Um, Dude, here's what I'd, I'd rather sleep on this. I feel like I'd almost rather sleep on the street. Like, I went street? really <laughs> down and dirty. <laughs> they're fun. They are fun. That's it's one true. step up from sleeping on the street, though. Yeah. 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 Right. But uh, we saw some like local festival. We saw some guy from the show Suits. I didn't recognize him. My buddy was like, "That's that guy from Suits." I'm like, "I don't watch the show. I don't know." And he goes, "I should go talk to him." And I'm like, "100 percent, you should leave him alone. He is in the middle of fucking nowhere, Guatemala. He doesn't want to be recognized." And he goes, "You sure?" I'm like, "I'm positive. I'm positive. <laughs> I can't express to you how sure I am that you should leave him alone." The the I was in uh, some corner of Kowloon Bay. You can come over. Yeah. In um, in in uh, Hong Kong once, and some guy came up to me and said, "I had the best time at your birthday party last week." This is when I was in, in the '80s and I had a big party. I'm like, "Yeah, this 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 is too insane." You got some fun. Yeah. You yeah, can bring you got, it. Shawnee? It's not a TV show. <laughs> Hi guys, are you trying to fill a position at your company? Well, finding the right candidate can be tough. It's almost like finding a needle on a haystack. You get too many resumes, and there's not enough candidates out there with the right skills or experience. I'm telling you from my own experience, there is the wrong candidate. And that was me when I was in the business world. I was a bad employee. Don't find someone like me. Let ZipRecruiter.com find amazing candidates for you and fast. And right now, you can try ZipRecruiter for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash tripping. Yeah, I was the wrong employee. Don't get stuck with me. I would do bad things. I would bring down your company. I would do things like uh, coming in late with hookers, uh, coming in too early to meth up for the day, stealing copy machines, sleeping at my desk, vomiting in the afternoons, aggressive stare downs of our fellow employees. They didn't like that one. Sleeping in the bathroom, morning vomits, threatening lawsuits, too many Jew jokes in meetings, strong political stances on client calls, facing my fears, unflushed diarrheas, Porn, both watching and creating, and much, much more. I was a bad employee. Don't get stuck with me. Get stuck with a quality candidate. Ditch the other hiring sites and let ZipRecruiter find what you're looking for. The needle in the haystack. Four to five employees, excuse me, four to five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. Try it for free at this exclusive web address, ZipRecruiter.com slash Trippin. Again, that's ZipRecruiter.com slash Trippin. ZipRecruiter, the smartest way to hire. Hi, everybody. Are you in the market for a certified pre-owned jizz rag? Well, I'm selling them. That's right. Ari Shafir jizzes on all sorts of stuffs and sells them online. And I'm sure you're asking, how do you sell that online? Well, Shopify.com got me there. They helped me set up my online store from start to finish. They're the place to go to set up your own market. And my market is jizz rags. Maybe you're done just taking the towel out of the bathroom in the hotel, using the smallest one, then throwing it by your bed when you're done. And hopefully you remember. Hopefully you remember and take that towel to the shower, run some water on it so the, so the mate thinks you didn't jizz on it, but you used it to clean up. Well, I've got you on a more stepped up level and Shopify helped me get there. Once you start selling, Shopify makes getting paid simple by instantly accepting every type of payment. And I do for certified pre-owned jizz rags. We've got throwback hats, jizzed on, Ecuadorian shopping bags made for toting stuff around, but they're also made for jizzing on. Pet stores, pet toys. Oh, you think your pet likes it now? Go get it, Spot. Just wait till you get some jizz on it. Maybe a sock that you're wearing you can still wear. You can buy it right now at ariashafir.com. And thank you, Shopify, for helping me set it up. Maybe you want to uh, jizz on a poor Osos hand towel so you could, uh, maybe you're probably angry for your friends for being uh, multimillionaires and turning into multi-billionaires and you want to get back at them in some way, so you jizz on a rag. Well, now you can buy it at ariashafir.com. Jizz rags galore. Thank you, Shopify, for helping me get there. Do you want your marketing made simple? Well, Shopify removes the guesswork with built-in tools to help you create, execute, and analyze your online marketing campaigns. We're looking into get, well, can't really say what the future holds right now, but just trust me, Shopify will help you get there. Jizz rags, that's my business. Sign up right now for a $1 per month trial at shopify.com slash trippin, all lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash trippin right now to grow your business no matter what stage you're in. That's shopify.com slash trippin. Now let's get back to the episode. Just first, listen later. I'm Ari Shafir. Let's enjoy more podcasts. Okay, you just scroll. 
Damn, you're in the middle of no- You took a fucking helicopter there? I'm telling you, it was plane, trains, and automobiles. Wow. Dude, I mean, this is the middle of fucking nowhere. Look at that. I mean, you were there. That's, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's, that's, you, that's like, northern cool Israel, that one. Oh. That's day one. Sometimes I was driving from a lot to Tel Aviv. Yeah. And I'm like, why are they fighting over this? There's nothing here. Nothing. <laughs> There's just fucking real Did desert. you do any diving in a lot? That's the other thing is you're that red the red the Red Sea there. I didn't get to dive like on the Sinai Peninsula. That would be insane. But I did in a lot. Um in that in the Hergata or that lake or whatever? No, no, or in whatever, the, red, the sea. red Sea. Yeah. Where's this? This is um Jordan? That's uh oh, that is uh Wadi Rum. Damn. I think I went there as a kid, but I didn't appreciate it. God damn, it really is foreign. It kind of reminds me of Zion a little bit. It's very Zion, very much so. Here's what's disappointing, yeah. quick thing. You go to the Galapagos Island, mm-hmm. and you go, oh, I'm on Catalina. <laughs> Looks exactly like it. Yeah. I'm not even being facetious. Exactly like it. And you've traveled your mind away to get there. God, yeah, yeah. It takes forever to get there. You can really only go from Quito or whatever, or from Quen- from uh, Guayaquil. Yeah. These are your meals? Yeah, just the meals. The food is next level. I what, could eat. What'd you like the best between those three countries? Or um, just tell me about Egyptian and Jordanian for now. I really don't, don't know much about them at all. I mean, honestly, the food is so, is is similar enough that it was. I I probably couldn't tell you the difference, but I could eat mi- Middle Eastern food all day. I could eat it three times a week. I could eat every every meal really. Yeah. Yeah, in Yafo, and you get those. Uh. What about you, coffee in like Egypt? Super strong, super good. I'm a big coffee guy. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, that was. There, I have more. I mean, uh, yeah, how about that? <laughs> Going for Ray on a camel. That's me on a camel. Oh, that's on a camel. It's on a camel. This is <laughs> me rolls. on a camel with that, in which Egypt? the Bedouins gave me. What do you mean? Who the, gets a camel? Who gets gifted a camel? Look, you bet, you're there. better marry one of their guys? daughters. Where's my guys? There's the Bedouins doing a little ceremony for us. The greatest hit you want. Yeah, just oh, oh, here we go. Here's the selfie. Mr. Tut. Oh, yeah, let me see that one. <laughs> okay. Did they ever tell you no pictures in the tombs? No, we had this thing so wired. Are you kidding me? They told me no pictures, and I was like, okay, they're like, but give me like a 10, and you can take as many pictures as you want. I have uh, the selfie somewhere else, but that's that's King Tut. Wow. Um, How old the, is that? The, that photo? Like, n- no, no, no. I mean, like, how old is the Tomb of Tut? Tomb of Tut. Here's a good one. This is my. Fi- this is one of my favorite photos. This is a good one. That's it, bro. That's so fucking. I cool. mean, that's we just got. Because also, when you were born in Dayton, Ohio, and even moved to Malibu, the odds of you ever getting there are extremely slim. Yes, and I, for whatever reason, love, I have the travel bug. Yeah. And I've never regretted traveling anywhere. And the older I get, I realize the most important things that you can have are memories. They're just the most important thing. Yeah. And you have to work at it. You have to commit to it. They don't just happen to you. You have to make sacrifices. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you got to pay for it. But you have to be willing to show up. Like, I know guys for this trip I'm talking about. I know guys that turned it down. Oh, so when is it again? So, wait, so this is, wait, it's 10 days? (laughs) So, wait, but wait, wait, but, 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 but I, but I can be back by the, fuck that. Yeah. You crazy? Are you nuts? Are you nuts? It's a trip of a fucking lifetime. No, no, I went to the producers of my TV show. I'm like, I'm going on this trip, so figure it out. Wow. Been on the show for five years. There, there are 17 other cast members. Yeah, and it's so hard. Everyone's like, I want to do mine here. I'm and like, there, I need like, 10 days off. I need to do, I'm 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 throwing down for this. Yeah. Like as if I would Were as they if cool? I, or were they, they like were great. giving you pushback? They, 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 they were they they were great. They understand. And look, granted, not everybody has the I I am fully aware as I'm talking that <laughs> you're Rob I, I mean, I'm in a rarefied yeah, era yeah, that yeah. Can, can pull this but off. But still take it. I heard fucking uh Nicholson is like, I don't shoot before ten. And they're like, all right, we'll work around it. Well, and there are also people who have who have every bit of entree that I have that don't do it. Right. But, but I don't like, know where would I. So where are we staying? I don't know, but I don't want to do a bit of Hannah. 
It's like, well, who's taking care of it? Who? The guy who owns a fucking NBA team is taking care of it. It'll be good. It'll be good. It's going to be good. Well, I don't know. I hear it's hot there. Or I don't know. What time of year is it again? Now, how or, do those people feel? Do I need shots? <laughs> but I hear like the, I'm not very good with altitude. Look, there's there are places I don't want to go that I don't have any particular yeah. Johnson to go. But again, if you're, if it's all tricked out, I'm I'm going even to those places. Yeah. How do those people feel when you got back and you were telling them about it? They can't believe it. They, yeah. They don't want to hear it, probably. They don't want to hear it. And, 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 and you can't. It's very hard. I find you must see this doing your show that it's impossible to describe to somebody. For example, one of my favorite places in the world is the Brando, which is a resort on a Tahitian island whose Tahitian name I would butcher. Okay. Named and after him. to go bone fishing with Marlon Brando's son in Tahiti. Like you can't describe that to anybody. Right. You 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 go you, like nothing it's you, it's a feeling more than a and then a picture like that won't do it. It's it's walking all day and coming over a hill and then seeing the ruins you were trying to get to. It's Machu Picchu. A, the, there's a feeling. When you, I hiked into, you Machu, did? Wow. hiked into Machu Picchu. Hiking into Machu Picchu is probably, the, if I had to pick one number one thing, like that Egypt, Middle East trip, in its totality, nothing yeah. will ever come close. But in terms of one event, hiking into Machu Picchu for sure would be it. And it's the very thing I thought would be underwhelming. Like I would have bet you anything. It, I would walk over and go, oh, like, you know, Chevy Chase in National Lampoon's vaca vacation yeah. when he sees the Grand Canyon? Uh -huh. He goes, okay, and he's gone. <laughs> like, that's yeah. what I thought Machu Picchu would be, and it wasn't. It, it was, was profoundly moving and worth every second of schlepping and hiking, and it was unreal. Wow, I got to get there. Do you ever have places you go where, you, where you're underwhelmed? Let me think. Probably, but also just like the the smells of those places is enough to makes be like, it worth this it. is awesome. You know, it it's like, yeah, not like there's minor pyramids. You know, in the Southeast Asia, you got to do them in the right order. See, the Southeast temples. Asia, I've got to get to. I'm very under, I'm very under traveled. There in Southeast Asia, um, I've got to do India at some point. Yeah, me too. And and I want to go to Antarctica, but I feel like. They're going to open it up more. Well, I know they are. They're doing tourism is a huge thing now. Yeah. And I want to wait to till you can get into places in Antarctica that people haven't gone before. It's hard to get to. Really hard to get to. My brother, my half brother's in the army, and so he goes everywhere and tries food everywhere. And and he that was his last stop, and they had to turn back because some lady got fucking thrown up in a in the boat. It was like pretty wave. They said three points of contact all the time. Move one leg, then move an arm. Uh, move one leg, and she didn't listen, and they had to turn it around. See, that's brutal. Yeah. You got to, and you got to be able to get to all the continents. I think that's the only one I haven't been to. Where else is really calling you? Um, I mean, it's hard to not get, sometimes you want to go back to places you, I really want to, oh, I can tell you, it's I want to. It's hard to like, I, I had so much fun. I want to get back there versus I already saw it. Well, also there's so much to be seen in Africa. Oof, like yeah. I haven't done the, I haven't seen the gorillas I want to. I want to do some, like in the Zambezi River, do whitewater rafting. Whoa. I really want to do that. Um, I, I I think Africa is always. You can't go wrong there. I'm so scared of Africa. It's the best. What, what? Tell me why I'm wrong about being scared. What are you scared of? I don't know. I think it might honestly be some sort of like like xenophobia or just possibly innate racism, where it just feels like. It's just more dangerous there than these other places. It's, it is absolutely. I saw poachers all the time. Yeah, but you don't have ivory on you, so it's like yeah, but they'll kill, they will kill you. Oh, they don't want to be found uh, out. I mean, I, I didn't see them all the time, but I definitely saw poachers. What do they do when you see them? If you're in the wrong place at the wrong time, they'll kill you. Whoa. They will. Um, but I, when I saw them, luckily, <laughs> oh, damn, that's so fucking. Luckily, they had they didn't they hadn't seen us. Oh my and god! And that was tw thirty years ago when it was really super gnarly. And then I went on an anti-poaching expedition when I was in South. By the way, South Africa is one of the most beautiful places I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, 
by the way, the hardest to get to. I mean, I've never suffered more to get than, than getting to South Africa. Really and Cape Town, South Africa, yeah. might be the most beautiful city. But also, you get off the plane there and you feel in the air thick the potential that this place could blow up any day, any day over anything, uh-huh. and it would just be over. You want to talk about danger? G- go to South Africa. Damn. And you will feel it. Like uprising type stuff? Yeah. Yeah. It is a dangerous, dangerous, so beautiful. Like Remember that scene in, in uh, Godfather when they're like, Cuba's like, the guy's like, hey, I'm retiring. Good luck, everybody. Do you remember that? And then he's like, oh, everyone's like, oh, we got to get out of here right now. That, <laughs> yeah. that, that could happen anytime. Damn. Never been to Cuba? I'm going. No way. I'm going for the election. I'm going to skip out in the election. Mm. So I can like not be here for it. <laughs> I love that. Just smoke a Cuban cigar and be like, whatever. And ignore all of it. Whatever. <laughs> yeah. Whatever. Yeah. Yeah. It'll get settled. Yeah. It'll get settled without me. Yeah. I always feel like I'm, I'm getting old enough now that I see why old people get jaded. And the reason they get jaded is they've heard it all. Uh, yeah. And I cannot tell, I have yet to live through an election that wasn't the most important election of my lifetime. God damn, it's every one. And yeah. you're like, more than the Lincoln one? Yeah, more <laughs> like, than the one that was about the, the, like yeah. whether we're going to have slavery or not. Yeah, it's like, I don't I Really? Don't the one, the one right before World War II? Really? It's always the most important. It's like, it's the boy who cried wolf. Yeah, everybody's Hitler. All right, yeah, we've got 20 Hitlers Hitler, and not Hitler. one. I remember Ronald Reagan. Yeah, we hated him. He was going to start World War III. No, he actually ended the Cold War. Yeah, but he was <laughs> yeah. a bad guy. You're right. So it's like- uh, It's just boring just, after I, a while. I can't. I can't. I can't. I, yeah. just, I, I, I can't. The president of the United States can't even fire his personal chef. He can't. It's all bullshit. <laughs> it's so funny when people when you tell people you don't care, and they're like, "What do you mean?" You're like, "I'm not against you. I just don't care." Because at the end of the day, it on the edges, yeah, it makes a difference. It yeah, does. Sure, sure. On the edges, yeah, it doesn't make one bit of difference in the middle. Right. Yeah, and like our lives are going to be about the same regardless. One hundred percent. Yeah. So like, so like. Meh. It's funny in Ecuador they don't they have twenty five parties or something like that and they all know they're all crooked so they're like mm-hmm. oh my guy's less crooked they they're pretty open about it my guy I think is the least crooked he may be one. crooked but he's my guy yeah yeah I've never <laughs> or he's been crooked to, for us you ever been to Argentina I've never been there no I'm gonna I want to go <laughs> yeah but, but or Gobekli Tepe oh that's where I want to go Gobekli Tepe where the fuck is that so Gobekli Tepe dude is- I honestly I'm I had no, I was like has he traveled. When they suggested you, this is fucking tits, bro. I love this. So Gobekli Tepe, I've not been, is the currently the oldest known pre-megalithic site in the world, and they do not know how old it is. They do not know. know. And it predates any civilization Whoa. on record. And it's newly discovered. And again, they, they don't they have, have them. these guys too? Is that Gobekli Tepe? It says Eastern Turkey. Towards, that's Eastern Turkey, know. but that's not Gobekli Tepe. That this is, is Gobekli Tepe. Whoa. An immense mystery older than Stonehenge. Oh, way older than Stone. Stonehenge isn't that old. Whoa. I mean, yeah, this is. Wow. That would be very cool. Right? Yeah. There's also something to, to like in an animism. Great Wall of China, never been. Here's the thing. I don't have any real, desert. my son has one. been to China. Uh-huh. And. I don't have any real overarching thing to, to, other than the fact that it's such a thing. So foreign, unbelievable. It's just, the, I, don't, I don't. Besides those, like I never saw them, but those the statues of the warriors, you know, and the Great Wall. It's like, what are we really seeing here? And the, the gr- Emperor's Palace. Other I'm, than that, it's just like living in China is interesting and different. Yeah, my my son came back from there and he studied Mandarin in high school. Both my boys did. What? Mark. And um, he came back, and, he, and this is my son who went on to be a military history major in Duke. So he, yeah. this is in Fuck his. Fuck him. Yeah. Fuck you, you, Duke. You had North, North, you had a Tar Heel over there? <laughs> well, I went to Maryland. Uh, oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> and yeah, I would grow up in, in Maryland, North Carolina, too. I just want to make sure that's clear. Fuck Duke. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, you'll appreciate the 30 for 30 that I made called I Hate Christian Leitner. Oh, were you, you in that one? I, I produced it. Okay. So you have to check that out. Oh, yeah. Um, Dude, I was ready when, when I was a Hornets fan back when they were in Charlotte, mm-hmm. and I was ready to, like, I got to, if they draft him instead of mourning, I was like, I got to do something about it. Amazing. I got to go down there and take him out. That's amazing. <laughs> like, I can't the, have Those were great team. times. <laughs> yeah. But um, he, went, so when he went to China, he came away saying, 
th- they're not the notion that they're ready to step in to compete with us is oh right BS. Yeah, when you go there and like none of the air, air heating works, none of the it's poor. Yeah, yeah. It's like you have no idea. We see you know the amazing buildings in Shanghai, but. You get off that beaten path even for a second even, and you just can't believe it. Bro, three blocks over in Shanghai, Shanghai, away from like that, it's like, oh, it's back to like rural. You know? Yeah. It's it's people are sweeping with like palm leaves, brooms. They're just like, you have a job, everyone's doing a job. It's uh, it, the world is I mean, that, and that's the other thing I think about. And I this one of the things I love about your podcast is and look, I love America and I love Americans. And I'm not ever the guy ever who like shits on that. I'm super patriotic. Yeah. Even when you know people think whatever they think, God bless them, but I love my country and I love Americans. And I'm I believe in American exceptionalism. That said, the 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 lack of travel in our country is oh, appalling and inexcusable. But I get it though. It's like it's easy to say Europeans are are, are more well traveled. They could get in a car and drive to three different countries in one day if they want to. We we do have what what should be four different countries here? Yes, we if do. You go from L.A. to fucking uh, even Joshua Tree. I'm like that's that's a vi- that's another country should be. You How know? about this? I had never gotten to Yosemite. I just went for the first time. God, if damn. I flew across the globe and got off a plane and saw Yosemite, I'd be like, I'm so glad I flew across the globe. I drove for yeah, right, right, three right. hours. Yeah, it's world class Yosemite. Yeah. World class jaw dropping, and it's just like one of a hundred things we have in this country. Yeah. So I get why we don't. Travel. I get it, but also get out of here. Get out of here. So what do you do? You ever get this when you come back home after ten days or longer gone and like start making new realizations about your own country? Yeah. Yeah. All the time, and it's mostly around how we have just don't have any awareness of what is going on writ large in the world. We just do. Yeah. Not. And you see it even in places like I was shooting a movie in Australia and the weather report. Like, we don't get the weather in the United States of what's going on in Bangkok oh, right. or anywhere else. It's not, I mean, you might see it on a scroll if you're watching CNN International, but you go anywhere else in the world and they're showing you stuff that's going on all over the right, world. Right, 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 right. Yeah. And they know more about us. We know nothing about them. Nothing. It's not comparable. I was when I got back from South Asia. My first, my first realization was like, oh, our toilet paper is the best. It There's a lot rules. of that, right? <laughs> Particularly yeah. coming from Southeast Asia. How are the shitters in Egypt and and Jordan and places like well, that? They're not as shocking as China. Okay, yeah, no, nothing. But the me. Egypt was pretty. Egypt was. I think I took a picture of one of them. Yeah. <laughs> That's something I mean, they don't tell you in the travel books. The, yeah, they don't tell you any of that stuff. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, we got to start wrapping this up. I could fucking talk about this for five hours mm, with you. Me too. Um, uh, a couple of things I ask people, I already asked you where else you want to go, but do you have any like general travel tips? Like I've had packing light, I had a, a big and good toiletries bag, anything, like just a general tip that you would tell people. That's a really good one. Boy, that's such a good travel tip. Um, well, while you're thinking about no, that, yes, is there anything you notice about these places in the Middle East that is not like in the books, but you made a like in Ecuador, for one, the ice cream was way softer than any other place I've been. I love that. I love that kind of that yeah. kind of tip. Any of those? Um, I I think the Middle East for me was just that you, the quality of the food, consistently, across the the whole region Mm -hmm. was amazing and the intensity with which people come at you whether it's the girls who are like super down yeah or or the men who are just so full of life and like it's the the zest for life intensity yeah is off the charts but in terms of packing or, or not even necessarily packing, but just like a travel tip. I, I I prepare for all weather contingencies. That's not bad. So you know, the, today they have those puffies that are light, and you can ball them up into the size of your fist. Yeah. So lightweight puffy, almost no matter. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I had a I had an early summer in France that caught me by surprise, so freezing. Yeah. Once. 
So since then, puffies and their pillows. Yes, puffy they're makeshift pillows. pillows. Mostly my stuff is travel plane related, which is noise canceling earphones mm-hmm. and sleep mask. I don't go anywhere with. I don't. I literally don't go anywhere without those. Really? No. <laughs> my buddy was on a show called The, the League. He said, mm, this is "I how, love the League." Oh, it was great. Steve Renazzisi. He was Kevin, and um, and he goes, "This is how he travels on a plane. He's like puts on his everything, and people are like, are you from the League? Is it what?" Yeah, uh-huh. Yeah. Right, now, right, let me ask right, you a quick question. Sleep. I know we got to go, but I want to think of yeah. this thing of raw dogging a flight. Explain. What do you mean by that? Raw dogging a flight? Oh, do you not? You're not down with this new thing? No. What is raw dogging? I know Dude, what raw dogging is. It's right? a different thing. What is raw no, dogging No, there's a, a whole thing now about <laughs> I'm going to raw dog this flight. Like, it's a thing guys do. It's a thing on the internet. It's a new trend. And so raw dogging a flight bringing is. Bringing nothing? Is bring nothing, do nothing. So, Fair. So I don't. You can't read. You you can't listen to music. I I. It's debatable whether you can. I don't think you can sleep. What? And it's like a badge of honor. It's like I'm a man. To what end? Are you supposed to talk to your neighbor? Oh, you. I'm sure you. Well, yeah, that's, it, you'd have to. I think you can talk to your neighbor, but, but the notion is you don't need no screens, no emails, yeah. no nothing. You look at the uh, and the, the real thing is you look only at the flight tracker. And it's a thing, Google I, it. I do do my best writing on like an edible if it's daytime and I can look out the window and see cities pass by and then I just like zone out and then like think of ideas, quickly write but them. But then, no, then that's your writing. Oh, fuck. Raw dogging. <laughs> fuck Check that. it out. It's- uh, uh, first, first notion is fuck off. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> yeah. I got you. <laughs> um, <laughs> buddy, it was great meeting. You got to come back and tell me yeah, about we'll another place. Yeah, we'll do more. Yeah. Yeah, these are evergreen too. So like, they're all evergreen. Yeah, it's like yeah, a trip from twenty years ago. I'm going to be doing relevant. more traveling, and we got to do more, more talking. You got to um, convince more of your friends to do it too. Oh, I will for sure. Yeah, my yeah. travel friends. But again, I, I meant to travel. And to, uh, yeah. there are people. Oh, I'm doing the Orient Express this fall. I've never done it. Wow. Wow. That's I know gonna be it's going to be sick. sick. You get your own cabin and stuff, and just like. Um, again, when people with means yeah. invite me, sure. the answer is yes. This is a world-renowned rock star who's renting out the Orient Express for their for If it's Tom Petty, birthday. I got some bad news for you. Yeah, it's not Trip's not happening. No. no. Okay. <laughs> but if it's anybody else, that. that's fucking awesome. Um, I'm going to do drops for your plugs earlier. Please. But everybody okay. watch Unstable. It's new. It's a fucking rare feat. The LeBron slash Brawny of acting. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Johnny Lowe. <laughs> yeah. Congratulations. He's given nepotism a good name. Do you ever go over to him and like, hey, you're doing this wrong? <laughs> yes. Let me tell you how to, like, as a fucking veteran, let me tell you how to do yeah, this. Yeah, I'm usually like, engage your core. Oh. Engage the core. What do you want? You don't have a FUPA on national television. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> and I will say this again. You wearing that Houston Asterix hat on Rogan was so, f- as, as every Yankee fan, that might be, I might be judging by Yankee fans. Fuck the Astros forever, more than Duke. That was fucking great what you did. Stood up I, we for all of us. went out of my own pocket, had those things made up. I'd never seen one before. The Houston asterisks. It was so great. I had never seen one before. And then I was like, wait, well, he's wearing a fucking asterisk. Oh, wait a minute. I love that you knew that that's what that because the it's so subtly different. It almost looks exactly like the Astro Astros star, but it's an asterisk. Yeah. Let me see if I have a there, picture. There of it is, right there. Yes, feel. Look at it. Yeah. Good for you, bro. Good for fucking you. <laughs> Fuck them. Fuck so. these fucking cheaters. And he still doesn't mean he did anything wrong. He's like, they found nothing. They found so much. Well, here's the thing is, they were all doing it. They were. Oh, yeah. You know what? And that. I hate to say it. Yeah. I don't want to say it because it'll make news, but some of the very big teams yeah. <sighs> were doing as much or more. But the I think the Astros were doing the most. Yeah. And they certainly got caught. And I'm sorry, Altuve was wearing a wire. Nobody can tell me a otherwise. A fucking wire. Don't, fucking t- don't, wire. don't touch my jersey. Don't Come touch my on. jersey. He's, dude, he's wearing wire. Yeah. There's no way he wasn't wearing a buzzer. That's not baseball. I don't but even like them. It, fucking... when, it's, when, it, when, it's a, when it's a breaking ball, buzz me. That's all. Just buzz me if it's a breaking ball. Seeing them By the t- way, I could hit 300. <laughs> With a fucking Just buzz me when it's a breaking is. ball. I could hit 300. Yeah. <laughs> I love this. I love this. All right, Rob. Thanks a lot. So fun. I really appreciate it. So fun. Well, you guys, that's it. That is the episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Please subscribe right now uh, if you enjoyed it. And check out Unstable on Netflix, Rob Lowe's show. Um, 
I can't. I, it's, it's, I was, I was happy that I was not weird around him. I, I'm out of Hollywood for, for long enough now that I'm just like, oh hey, what's up, man? Like I, I know too many d-bag actors, and high-level actors to fucking get weird about around one. Like, oh, you know. But, um, he wasn't one. He was fucking down to earth and very cool. They told me I was like trying to reassure his handler. I was like, uh, hey, if there's anything he doesn't like in the podcast, like, don't. I'm not trying to play catch up. I'm not that kind of guy. Uh, I'll just take it out, like, you know, just to make him feel like he shouldn't have to worry about what he has to say. And they go, uh, well, he just did Tiger Belly, and he didn't have any problems with that one. And I was like, oh, well, then you're going to have no problem. No problem on you be tripping. I wonder if he did Tiger Belly the way I do Tiger Belly, which is taking a frozen chocolate bar and shoving up Bobby Lee's butt. Shoving is the wrong word. Shoving is the wrong. Inserting is the right word. Shoving makes it seem like it was violent. This wasn't violent. This was loving. Bobby Lee, the slept king. I gave him a choice. You want Twix or you want uh, uh, Almond almond Joy? Obviously Twix. You know, it's more fucking boofable. Um, it did remind me, though, of my trip to Egypt for sure, which I'll do a full episode on myself when I get someone to interview me. I like some of these. I like the idea of me doing mine. I got I got one more coming. Toby interviewed me about uh, Thailand, and um, and then I got one coming about Guatemala with with a friend that I met at a hostel in Guatemala um, about a trip that we took together. So that that would be cool. But I'm gonna have more people interview me. And Egypt is definitely on there. And it really is magic, man. I did so much acid, not so much acid. I did one hit of acid and walked around all those pyramids, and it was the right move. It was the right move. I lugged that acid around to fucking eight or nine different countries. And I got to, and then I got to Egypt. I'm like, oh yeah, this is the spot. This is it. And just wander. Oh, I gotta tell I gotta tell you all about. It. But it's another episode. And then Petra was, you don't understand, you come down this long tunnels. It's like it's like a valley of a mountain, you know, like cliffs on both sides. It gets narrow, 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 narrow. And then it just opens up and it's this giant, I mean like three story building carved into a mountain. It looked Photoshop. It was it was fucking nuts. Uh, my Patreon, patreon.com slash Trippin is kicking off very nicely. I've been reading these postcards that I'm getting from you guys. Um, you're sending them out, and I'm reading them on the air, and I'm filling up this the Patreon wall, the back wall, covered with fucking uh, uh, postcards from around the globe. I will not put up American ones. This one's American, so I'm going to read it on here, but it will not go up on the wall because it's not from anywhere special. Um, it's a republic of Texas, but that's it. See it? What are the odds? What are the odds I hit record? Pretty high. Nice, Ari. User error. Does not apply this time. Send your postcards to UB Trippin, 151 First Ave, Box 49, New York, New York, 10003. Cannot accept packages. It is a postcard only mailbox. So um, you can send a letter if you want with bills that I'm going to put up over there on the podcast. I want to put up a different bill from every uh, country we've visited. I guess you can't see it right now. So we'll shift. Yeah, that. All places we've been. And I want to fill up all this area. Boom, 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 boom. With. Sorry for listening. If you're watching, I mean. With, um, with different bills. So if you want to send me a bill from somewhere, money, I'll tell you where I need. Cuba, episode coming. Egypt, definitely now. Jordan, ah, I don't have any Israeli shekels, shekels, but if you have any of those. Anywhere we've been, really. India, any money from India, send it, send it over. It's crooked now. Okay, well, it's still probably bad. Um... Yeah, I can accept those. Little note saying where you were when you got that money, shit like that. Anywhere you've been. So where else are we at? Brazil, um, the UK, I got up there already. Uh, it doesn't have to be a big bill. <laughs> I'll cash it if it's a big bill. <laughs> um, Ari, amazing video slash Tucker. Uh, I can't believe I was at the Comedy Mecca. I went to the Comedy Mothership and the Sunset Strip. I hope I can come back one day to see Kill Tony. I come to DFW. Every six months um, in training, for training. Sadly, my schedule is too short. I'm about to check out UB Trippin' with Louis Katz. It's a good episode. 
Uh, not much to tell you about Austin since you're there all the time. Go check out the bats. The bats are fucking cool to see them all come out under the bridge. You like football? Go see a game. Love, Javier. Well, Javier, this was in the podcast studio and I was in America. I put it up there, but since it's not in the podcast studio, which is over there, and it's not from America, fuck off. Um, but yeah, the Patreon, I'm going to read up these postcards and just riff and stuff like that and, um, and do whatever. So that's it. Today's episode is produced by Your Mom's House Network. It's edited by Alan Caffey. Um, who's always does a great job. And that's it. You guys leave comments in the YouTube for other people possible that you think I should be booking and just a different. Also, if you if you went to any of these countries, Egypt, Jordan, Israel, and you had your own experiences, leave those in the comments. It ends up being fucking on the YouTube anyway. A whole fucking discussion section about stuff to do or stuff people want to do. And they go like, well, what is it? And people connect. It's pretty fucking cool. Nice little community we've got going on here. Um, yeah, that's it. I hope you guys are enjoying it. Get that Jew vinyl before they're gone. Um, 600 are gone already, so 400 left. I think that's it. Until next week. Oh, what's next week? I think David Cross about Turkey. I think I'm going to show the David Cross one about Turkey. And then the week after that, maybe Shane Gillis. I'll figure out the order. But don't forget to subscribe and click on next week every Monday morning is the new episode of You Be Trippin'. Until next week, everybody. Shalom. Lehi <laughs> I knew that one easy. Bye.